Hello, I'm Jan Molt, one of the Assistant Directors for Competitive Events for Hosts of Future Health Professionals. Today I'm going to be talking for just a few minutes, sharing with you some examples of some strategies and some activities that I used in my classroom for legal and ethical issues in healthcare. And I entitled this, You Be the Judge. I started with asking students, what do you think? And I give them a particular case. This is an older case from 1976 when Temple University Hospital was sued by a patient who reported that after a CT scan, she developed an allergy to the dye that had been injected. She said that she had reoccurring severe headaches and she also said that she had lost her psychic powers. The patient said that prior to the CAT scan, she was able to read auras. She could observe both past and future and could help police solve crimes. She reported she had lost her business as a result of the loss of her psychic powers. So I asked the students, is this malpractice or not? And we go through a definition of what is malpractice, and they are to determine if they think it is. And if they do think it's malpractice, how much should be awarded to this particular patient? After I've given them some time to discuss it among themselves, then we discuss it, and then I share with them the decision from the case. And in this particular case, the patient was awarded $988,000. So I share with them something that was said to me in nursing school, anyone can be sued at any time for anything. The question is, will they win? I can remember hearing that and listening to the lecture on legal ethical issues when I was in nursing school and being really frightened. But I think it's extremely important that our students really realize how important this topic is. So then I have some cases. I divide them into groups and I give out the cases. Each case is different for each group. And the first case is a board certified psychiatric nurse practitioner in a privately owned alcohol and drug treatment facility who sees a 52 year old patient who's been admitted to that facility. The patient has a diagnosis of depression, fibromyalgia, and chronic pain. After he sees the patient, the nurse practitioner determines that the placement is not appropriate, that she needs inpatient psychiatric care. Two times the nurse practitioner approached the attending physician. The psychiatrist responded that diagnosis and recommended care was his responsibility and that the patient was in fact in the correct facility. After a family visit, the patient attempted suicide. She survived, but anoxia resulted in permanent brain damage. The family sued for damages. So the question that the group needs to come up with and come to a consensus about is, was the nurse practitioner guilty? And if so, what should be the award? I don't tell them until after they've presented what they have, but in this particular case, the patient's family was awarded $1 million. The, a juror was interviewed after the case, and their response was that they felt that the nurse practitioner should got, have gotten a hold of the family to let them know that the placement was inappropriate or should have been um, more aggressive with the attending physician. I did take this case from Nurse Services Organization. The next case that a different group would have, you have a 67-year-old man who was hospitalized, total knee replacement. He had an epidural catheter for post-operative pain management. He had one episode of hypotension, which was treated with good results. He was transferred to a medical surgical unit, and there was a receiving RN who had been pulled to that unit from crit critical care. The receiving RN assessed the patient, found him to be stable, and reported she assigned an LPN to care to, for the patient while he was on the unit. Uh, the patient had respiratory therapy ordered, but he was so nauseated when they came to the floor that he could not participate. The patient later vomited. 
and the RN reported that the LPN, LPN found the patient unresponsive and a code blue was called. The LPN and two other staff members stated that the RN found the patient and called the code. They further stated that the LPN had not been assigned to the patient. The patient was diagnosed with anoxic encephalopathy and died when life support was removed. Is this malpractice, and if so, how much would be awarded to this particular patient? Obviously, there was some communication problem, but there were also two different stories when the case got to court, which doesn't help anybody's cause. This particular case, the RN was found to be guilty of malpractice, and the family was awarded $250,000. This case came from the California Association for Nurse Practitioners. Case three is an infant that was seen 21 days after a normal delivery for its first well baby visit. The physician who saw the baby diagnosed mild jaundice and possible failure to thrive. The infant didn't return for any further visits until the age of six months. When the infant came in at six months. He was examined by a nurse practitioner who was in that practice. She reported that he was developing normally. The mother failed to bring the child in for two subsequent scheduled visits. When contacted by phone about the missed appointments, the mother said the baby had started looking at her cross-eyed. They immediately scheduled her for an appointment in one week. She didn't show up. At 10 months, the infant was brought back in, and the nurse practitioner at that time noted some developmental delays. Due to those developmental delays, the referral was made to the neurodevelopment clinic. The infant was seen again at 11 months, and the mother reported she had not been contacted by the neurodevelopment clinic, and at 12 months, the infant was seen, and there was an increase in delays, and there was even some more significant findings like minimal muscle tone. When the infant was seen by the neurodevelopment clinic, testing showed a rare benign brain tumor. Five days later, a craniotomy was performed. Neurological examination at the age of seven showed an IQ of 66, and also reports that the child would need lifetime assistance. So again, they're answering, if this is this malpractice, if so, what would you award in the case? And pretty much across the board when I've done this with students, they do not feel this is malpractice because the patient's mother failed to meet what had been recommended. So then I share with them that the um, family was awarded $500,000. They said the nurse practitioner failed to order indicated testing and to obtain an urgent referral. So again, you can be sued for anything at any time. This case came from the California Association for Nurse Practitioners. So just a really neat way for students to kind of hear actual cases and see what's involved. Uh, and we talk specifically about Lack of communication oftentimes is what you get to in the bottom line when you talk to, start talking about these malpractice cases. There is a HOSA competitive event, Medical Law and Ethics, which is a written test. If you look at the test plan on the website, you'll see that the bioethical issues included are allocation of scarce resources, genetic engineering, reproductive issues, and end-of-life issues. And all of those are really easy to turn into a debate in the classroom, to turn into a discussion point. Obviously, biomedical debate lends itself very well to any of those topics that I just went over. The guidelines for biomedical debate can be found at hosa.org. You go to competition and guidelines, and you'll find those there. The current topic for the 2021 school year is designer babies. Parents should be allowed to genetically engineer their offspring. 
and I'd almost guarantee your students will have some opinions on that one. Research persuasive writing and speaking is another event. The guidelines again can be found at www.hosa.org. This year's current topic is technology use, does it make us more or less connected? And again, with what students are going through, many of them uh, not being able to socialize in person for as long a period of time as it's been since March, then I think uh, this is a significant topic. I thank you for your time. We will um, be sharing these videos and the materials so that you can have them for your classroom. Thank you.